Today, I'm gonna to be teaching you how to double Instant Pot recipes. Hi, I'm Karen Peterson, and I run the website 365 Days of Slow and Pressure Cooking. I share Instant Pot and slow cooker recipes with you there for every day of the year. Today, I'm gonna to be sharing with you a tip on how to double recipes. I get this question a lot. People say, um, I wanna double this recipe that feeds four because I have a family of eight that I, need to, that I need to feed tonight for dinner. And they just want to know, do I need to increase the cooking time? Do I need to make any other changes to the recipe? And I would like to address that question today because I think by understanding this question better, you can understand pressure cooking better in general, and you'll be to have better success with your Instant Pot recipes that you make. So let's get started with the tips. The first point that I want to make is that pressure cooking time is determined by the size and the thickness of the food, not the quantity. So let's say I wanted to make one baked potato. I would put it in here for 15 minutes. Let's say I wanted to put, make two baked potatoes. I would put it in here for 15 minutes. The time doesn't change. The time that uh, it takes to get to the center of one potato is the same amount of time that it takes to get to the center of two potatoes or three potatoes or eight potatoes. The second thing is thickness of meats does affect pressure cooking time. Let's say you have one pound of roast beef and you cook it for 60 minutes. Um, what if you have two pounds of roast beef and it is double the amount of thickness, you're gonna to need to increase the cooking time on that thick piece of roast beef. Let's say you have two one pound uh, roasts that are the same thickness. You'll maybe go back to the 60 minutes again, just because they're the same thickness and they're two pieces of separate meat. Hopefully that makes sense to you. A lot of times people might say, cook chicken for 12 minutes. Well, that 12 minutes might be based on a chicken breast that is this thick, whereas your chicken breasts are this thick because you get the big honking ones from Costco. So that is something to consider, is the thickness of the food is more important than the quantity of the food when deciding whether to increase a cooking time or decrease a cooking time. The fuller the pot, the longer it will take to reach pressure. So if I'm cooking twice as much food, let's say I'm making a pasta recipe, and usually it just goes about to about there. If I double the recipe, it's gonna to go to about there. And that means the pot will take a lot longer to reach pressure. What if I'm using my eight quart? If you're using a larger pot, that will also affect the time that the pot takes to reach pressure. When considering these two examples, of a fuller six quart pot and or using an eight quart pot when the recipe indicated they used a six quart pot it means that the time that it takes to reach pressure is increased therefore all the time that is building up and building up and building up to reach the pressure is cooking the food the food doesn't just automatically start cooking when your 10 minute timer starts counting down the food is being heated up and cooked as the pot builds pressure so if your pot is super full and it takes a super long time to come to pressure, you'll need to actually decrease the cooking time, the pressure cooking time. In my pasta example, pasta is one of those foods that can get overcooked fairly quickly. It doesn't require a long cooking time to begin with. Maybe four or five minutes is what I usually do. So if, it's, if your pot's taking a ton of time to build pressure, you may need to decrease your cooking time by one or two minutes. The other thing is if it's like a roast beef or dried beans, um, and it takes a long time to reach pressure, that's not really gonna ruin the food. It's gonna be fine keeping that normal pressure cooking time. So for finicky foods like, like steaming vegetables or um, pastas or things like that that are just kind of lower cooking times, lower pressure cooking times to begin with, decrease the cooking time. For the other recipes like roasts and beans and some grains, you're gonna be okay just to keep that same pressure cooking time. What if you're reading a recipe and it uses a trivet or a steamer like this? And it says, pour one and a half cups of water into the bottom of the pot, place your steamer or your trivet in the bottom, and then put the food on top of the trivet or steamer. Do you need to double the amount of liquid that's in the bottom of the pot? The answer for that one is no. 
Um, you do not need to double the amount of liquid. All you need to make sure is that the amount of liquid is enough to bring the pot to pressure. For a three quart pot, that's one cup. For a six quart pot, that's one and a half cups. And for an eight quart pot, that's two cups of liquid. You never wanna fill your pot more than two thirds full for normal foods. For foods that expand, like um, some grains and like dried beans, for example, you don't wanna fill more than half full. And those are the tips that I have for you today on how to double Instant Pot recipes. Remember, most of the time it's very simple. Double the ingredients and keep the cooking time the same. For finicky foods, decrease the cooking time by maybe one or two minutes. And for thickness, remember, if you're doubling the amount of thickness in a recipe as far as meats or um, like a big potato, for example, you're gonna need to increase the cooking time. I hope these tips were helpful to you today and that you'll be able to have lots of success in your Instant Pot. Visit my website at 365daysofcrockpot.com and come back here to YouTube next week where I'm gonna share another Instant Pot tip or trick recipe with you. Make sure to subscribe to my channel and if you'd like, join our 365 Days of Instant Pot Recipes Facebook group. We have lots of fun over there and we share every single day new recipes with you. See you next week, bye-bye.